Hello everyone, in today's video I'm doing a Flutter challenge where I'll basically create a mobile application in Flutter and today we're going to create a tic-tac-toe game type application and I'm going to do this live with very little cuts and show you basically the process of how, how I'm going to create this app. I haven't created this app before and so this is going to be my first time doing it. So here I'm creating a new Flutter application and let me just go and finish the creation process. Okay, so here we have our empty Flutter app created so let me now remove all this boilerplate code and we'll start from scratch okay so now basically all we have is our app class and here we'll create our home page okay so here we have created home page class and we're using it right here in our material app now since this is a stateful widget we also need to create the state for this page okay so now we have created our home page state we're basically using it right here in this build method is where we'll basically build out our page and the UI of it. So what we should first do is basically create a scaffold which is going to have our app bar and the body of our main page. Okay, so I built out this dumb UI. It basically has the app bar which has tic-tac-toe as its title and here we just have some centered text that says 1, 2, 3 just so, to see if this will work. So let me fire up the iOS simulator and then we'll basically run the app and see if it works. Okay, so now we have our app, our basically empty app up and running and let's now start out by building the UI. Okay, so first I think we need to have a 3x3 three three grid where we'll basically have our X and O elements. So I think we'll just create it by standard rows and columns in Flutter and we'll just put some sample text in there just to fill the space to see if this will actually look good. Okay, I think I got what I wanted. So basically we have our grid. I mean, this is like we basically, this looks like we just wrote some text 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Actually, I don't know if you can see this that well. So we have our 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3, which is basically three rows, three of these rows inside a single column. Okay, so now I think the next step is basically figuring out uh, which elements are we going to use and how are we going to label those fields. I'm thinking we can create like a box which will inside contain the text X or O when it's clicked. Uh, I'm not really sure how we're going to implement that. I think we can have a container with a box decoration which contains text inside and is wrapped in a tab gesture recognizer or whatever it's called, I'm not sure. So let me try to build out that widget and see if it works. So I'm going to create below this build function I'm going to create a function which is going to be called like build element and there we'll build out an element and try to use it here and see if it works. Okay, so I think we got basically the desired UI that we wanted. We have a container which contains a text. This container has a box decoration which has the shape of rectangle and has this kind of border. I had to look this up on Google on how to create these borders, but it's really nice. I mean, but this is too small. Let me just make the text a little bit bigger. It's going to make everything bigger and look a little better. Okay, now this is a little bit better, but we should also center this grid somehow. So let's see how we going to do that. Okay, so I put main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot center and also the cross axis alignment to be center, but for some reason it only centers this vertically and not horizontally, so let me figure out why that's not happening. Okay, now I'm trying this out and I have this very weird effect. So when I put the main axis size on the row to be minimal. When I put it on all the rows we have here, nothing happens. When I put it on just one of those rows, only one of those rows gets centered. When I put it on two rows, they also get centered. But when I put it on all three rows, all of them get back in the place they shouldn't be. So let me try and fix that. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just trying out random stuff and see if I can figure this out. Okay, I think I have this problem basically solved. So I removed the cross axis alignment attribute from our column. So we have our main axis alignment to be center. All of our rows must be on main axis size dot minimum because if I remove minimum from one of the rows, they go right back here. And we wrap the whole column in a center element. But if we don't wrap it in the center element, if we wrap it only in the center element and don't set any of these other attributes, 
basically nothing happens. So this problem looks to be pretty much solved. I'm now going to make text a little bit bigger and now we'll handle all the clicking and the logic behind this. Okay, now our grid is big as hell and we can click on it and do whatever we want. Now I think the way I want to approach this is we're going to have a matrix which is basically going to have one or two values. We can put in true or false, zero or one, x or o and basically when a user clicks in on any of these fields it's going to fill up the matrix with one of these and then check if anyone won the game. Let's see how we're going to implement it. So first we would have to wrap this container in a gesture recognizer and implement our on tap method. So let's do it. Okay, so here I wrapped it in our gesture detector. It's not a gesture recognizer, but a gesture detector. And whenever we click on some of these, this method is, is going to execute. So let's see if this works. I'm going to print to the console. I mean, I'm going to print to the console something like one, two, three. Okay, now save. And when I click one of these items on the grid, it should basically show up here. And it did, so our gesture detector works. And now we need to basically create our matrix and find a way to fill up that matrix. Okay, so here I have created our matrix, which is basically a list that contains a list. And here I'm going to use strings for the simplicity's sake so we can fill it up with X's or O's. Okay, so now we need to say that our matrix has a specific size. In this case, it's going to be three by three. And so we don't have to worry about index out of bounds exception and that kind of stuff. So I think we'll just initialize this in the constructor. Okay, so here I have created the constructor, which is basically going to initialize the length of our matrix. So what's basically happening here? We initialize the length of our matrix to be three. And now we go through every single list that's in that list. So as you can see list containing within a list uh, you can view this as like a chart or I mean basically look at this UI we say that it has we can say it has three rows so that's what we do here we set it to have three rows and then we go through each one of those rows so we go first row it has three columns second row it has three columns and third row it has three columns so that's basically what this for loop is doing going through the whole matrix through these rows we can say and it initializes the length of the columns to be three i hope you can understand this concept if not just look it up on google it's very simple matrices most of you have probably encountered it if you have been learning programming for any amount of time okay so now we need to see how we're going to fill this matrix up the simplest solution since we are building our element inside this function is to pass down two values first value to be the index of our row and the second value to be the index of our column in our matrix so we can fill the matrix up so i think that's the easiest and best solution for this so let's see how we're going to do that okay so here i added these parameters i and j to our build element function and now when we build our element we need to pass in the coordinates of that element so let's say this is zero zero this is zero one this is zero two then we have this is one zero this is one one and this is one two so so basically we pass in the x and y coordinates of all of these elements on the grid so we can fill out the matrix so we have the information which of these elements was clicked so now let's add all of that to the matrix we'll do that in our on tap function so basically now we're going to pretend we're still not going to be implementing the full game logic so whenever the user clicks we're going to act like he just clicked x so we don't have to bother ourselves with if he clicked x or if he clicked o because first you click x then o now it's going to be just x's so we'll add to our matrix a value of x through our i and j parameters so it was simple as that but now we have to do something else we need to see if our matrix has been changed properly Properly, and I'm just going to create a for loop which will loop over this matrix and print it out every time we tap on a certain button. Okay, so I basically created this stuff here to print out every time to print out the whole matrix every time we click on one of these items. So let's click on the first one. Okay, so here we have an exception thrown for some reason and I'm really not sure what what happened over here. Let me just try to do something and see if this works. Okay, so I think I've managed to fix this problem with lists and everything after some googling. Here we have our matrix and we initialize it and we say, we say it has three rows. And then we loop over the matrix and for every row we say it has three columns. And each of those three columns 
he has a default value of an empty string, which I mean, it's a string which has a space. And then here we set our matrix at i and j to be x. And then we iterate over and print that. Since I've clicked multiple times on our matrix to see if this works. So here's what we have. So when I click over here, for example, this is how our matrix is getting filled up. And as you can see, this is all working. Okay, now what we need to see is how we're going to implement uh, one user clicks on, let's say this field, and it fills it up with X. And the second user fills it up with this field, and then it has to be an O, and then the next time it has to be X, and then again O, and basically like that. I'm just going to have it like this. I'm going to have a string here as a member variable of this class called last character, and we're going to set its default value to be equal to O. And now we will add an if, if last character is equal to O, then we put in an X, and if it's not, the matrix out of i and j is equal to an o and of course we need to set our last character to be equal to matrix at i at j and put this underline before it and let's also change our last character name to be underline last character since this is a private variable and let's see if this works so let me reload this when we click it fills it in with an X. When we click it here, it fills it with an O. And now I'm gonna click it again and fill it with an X. Uh, and also the thing we need to check is if the user accidentally clicks on a field that was already clicked on and just not change it. So this is very easy to do. We'll just add an if statement to see if the matrix at, at i and j, if it's a white space, then fill it in. If it's not, well, don't do anything. Okay, so here we have implemented that logic and I reloaded the app, so let's test that out. So I think that this was already clicked, but we won't know, so let's click here. It says X, but if I click again on here, it will still say X because that field was all already clicked on. And now we'll add here an O and when we click again on it, it's still an O. Okay, so now we need to implement setting our text here dynamically to be not just be all X's but to be empty fields and then when we click them to set it to an X or an O. I'm not really sure if this is how we can implement this, but let me try just putting in the matrix I and J and see if this works. Okay, this clearly does not work. It does not change the state of it. Maybe if I wrap all of this in a set state. Okay, now all of our fields are basically filled up, so I'll have to somehow clear the whole matrix or restart the app. I'll just restart the app. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so I uh, have restarted the app and this grid basi basically shows that our matrix is empty and when I click on one of those elements, oh, it actually fills them up when I click on set state and that kind of stuff. So that's really nice. Okay, so it looks like I've fixed the error. I just made this container be, I mean, I just set its width to be 90 and I set the text to be in the center of basically the container. So that's that's pretty much it. Now we have to implement the logic to see who won and who didn't win and when someone won to empty up the whole list and all that good stuff. So I think our this our on tap function here is getting a little preoccupied. So let's we don't need to print any of this anymore since it's showing on the screen. So let me remove that. And let me remove this to a new function i'm just going to call this change or what should i call it let's make up a clever name what does this basically do it sets the current field so change matrix field or something like that and we'll just call that over here change matrix field and now we'll create another function which is going to be called check winner or something like that to see if someone won and if someone won just show a dialog this and this player won and we'll just restart the whole game okay so I think I basically implemented this like thing with checking who the winner is and whatnot so 
here I have this function check winner and also I forgot earlier to add these parameters so we can have i and j and I found this interesting algorithm on Stack Overflow so I don't have to like check the first row, the second row and whatnot. This is a very interesting algorithm actually. Definitely nice for playing. Here I still don't show any type of dialogue like this player won and you can restart the game and whatnot. I just print out which player won. This is basically the function. So if you want to check this code out, it's going to be in the description or the GitHub page is going to be in the description of the video. It's just going to print which player won. Did the X or the O player win? So let's see. We have an O, then we have an X, then we have an O, then we'll put an X here. And as you can see, it's still not printing anything. So let me put an O here and let me put an X over here. And it says X won. So that's pretty interesting. Let me now reinitialize the matrix immediately after the whole thing is done. So let me create this function that is going to be called init matrix and we'll call that in the constructor when our app is initialized and whenever someone wins. Okay, so as you can see, we have our init matrix function. We call that over here in the constructor and we'll also call that over here. Okay, so that's it. Let's rerun the app. Okay, now it basically cleared the whole screen as you can see. So here we have an O, an X, an O, an X, an O, and it immediately clears the screen. Maybe I should add some kind of a delay for it to show it on the screen and then clear it. I don't know, but it really doesn't matter since we're going to be basically showing an earlier dialogue, but... Okay, so we have an almost fully functional app. The main logic for our game is pretty much done. The only thing we need to do is basically implement when the game ends for us to pop up a dialogue and let the user know and give him the ability to restart the game. But we'll do that in part two. Since I'm very, very tired of recording this video, but it's going to come really soon. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, post it down in the comments. Contact me on Instagram, Twitter, wherever. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you next time.